Uh, boom. Hello, hello, and welcome to the Rock and Roll Podcast. I am your host, John Harris, and today we have Wes Hoffman, who has uh, just released, from what I understand, what's left of me. He just released his banging new single. So um, we're going to find out some more about what Wes has got going on. So, Wes, welcome to the show. Yes, thank you so much for having me, John. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. So... Not to be confused with the Nick Lachey, what's left of me. <laughs> it's a true story out there in uh, YouTube land, Spotify world, wherever you're listening to the show. If you're listening on the website, thank you so much. Um, when I saw the track, what's left of me, immediately I went to Nick Lachey circa like what, 2005 or something. <laughs> it shows my age, I guess. And... So I did it. I wrote back to the group email and I was like, hey, check this out. Nick Lachey, what's left of me? And then Wes, you wrote back within like two seconds. <laughs> I knew somebody was going to do it. You're the first one. But uh, when I was writing that and I mean, that was really what I felt like the song needed was that line. But I also was like, what's left of me? What's left of me? I know there's another song out there named that. <laughs> Little did I remember that it was Nick Lachey. <laughs> mm-hmm. There's probably a ton of songs, you know, there's only so many things I guess you could name a song. Uh, but I guess that song had an impact or something. But um, that's kind of funny that we both thought about the same Nick Lachey song. <laughs> now, you mentioned that the song had to have that that title or at least that line in it. So take us through what's left of me. It What is this track about? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So um, this track, you know, about a year ago, I went through a really crazy uh, life transition. Um, I separated from my wife, long-term relationship. Um, I kind of closed up. I was self-employed for five years. I closed up that business. I got a new job. I moved into a new place, moved out of an office. So like everything was changing. And, um, you know, as the song says, like I, I can finally see kind of where my life is at and what's left of it and where do I go from here? And like, you know, it was really good. It's kind of a sad song. People have mentioned like that it makes them tear up a little bit or makes them feel a little bit melancholy, (laughs) but it's also more about like having hope for the future. And, um, you know, there's a line in there that's like, you've got my number. And I think like today in, even though we are all very connected through social media and through digital means, um, a lot of, of times we don't feel like we can reach out to people and, um, it's about that too. So, um, it's about reaching out to people, going through major tra- life transitions and starting over my friend. Yeah. Wow. There's so much to talk about there. <laughs> I, I think you and Nick Lachey have a little bit in common there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> Boom. Um, wow. Okay. So. I think one of the ones that kind of struck me was you said you closed your self-employed business and got a job. That almost sounds like the the opposite of the dream. I know. I know. Yeah. So, um, you know, one of the things that I wasn't prepared for uh, or like, you know, being self-employed is awesome. And that was totally my dream for a while. And um, not to say that I won't go back to doing something, some kind of self-employed entrepreneurial venture in the future. Yeah. Um, but it had really worn me down, uh, mentally and, and emotionally. And, um, you know, it's just that kind of hustle culture, uh, of, you know, work as hard as you can and don't take any rest. Like I had really put myself and, uh, my relationships and just my own personal self worth and self care on the back burner. Right. So, um, I got, an, I got a job with an awesome company here. Um, I've been there for a little over a year now and, um, it's really provided me with that kind of like balance, you know what I mean? So mm-hmm. it's helped me out a lot and it's, it's, um, I'm in a really good place for that for like, I'm really thankful for that at this point. I know it sounds like the opposite of the dream, but, um, <laughs> you know, I, I've realized that all things are temporary and that life is a fluid thing and, and that, you know, you can go, you can have your own, you can do your own business and go and get a job and then go back and do your own thing. And, um, that it's all like, a an accumulation of, of these different experiences that we have. Yeah. I'm reminded of, of many, uh, many things, a, a Tony Robbins talk that I heard once where he was actually talking about that. And he said, how many of you feel like you should be an entrepreneur? And of course, everybody's hands go up because that's kind of the culture that I think that we've established for ourselves is we should be 
all all be entrepreneurs. And then he said something like, and how many of you enjoy doing that? And not everybody's hand went up. And he had this whole conversation about the mentality and the psychology of, are you actually a risk taker? Does it, do you, does it juice you to know that you could lose it all any second? And if it doesn't juice you to do that, then find somebody else to run that business for you. And you could be the talent in that business because the talent gets to go home at the end of the night, like sit yourself or seat yourself where you're juiced. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that, you know, I would honestly say that that is what I really like about where I'm at right now is I can wake up in the morning and give a hundred percent to my job. And then when I close my laptop, I don't really think about it until the next day. You know, I mean, a few things might pop in my head here and there like, oh, I need to remember to do this tomorrow or whatever. But it's nice to kind of have that balance. And then, you know, that's that's uh, afforded me the opportunity to spend more time on my music. And and, uh, you know, I have a podcast as well. I haven't done much with it because I've been so focused on the music lately. But it gives me a chance to work on the things that I really enjoy and and work on myself and put more into my relationships as well. So, Mm -hmm. okay. You mentioned a couple of things there. Uh, (laughs) Yeah. We won't talk about podcasts because those things are awful. It's a good thing that you haven't done that in a while. Oh, just (laughs) horrible. I mean, (laughs) I never thought they would ever catch on. (laughs) I know. Uh, Cool. Now you mentioned more time to work on music. So take us through that because Val did also send another track, uh, Fastest Gun on the West. Um, But, like, is there an album coming down the pipeline? Is there an EP coming down the pipeline? Take us through the musical journey that has thus become. Oh my God. So yeah. So my good friend, Justin Untersay, I know that's kind of a, a, a weird one to, to, to say, um, he plays drums with me. And, um, about three and a half years ago, he asked me if I, I got an email from this dude. <laughs> He's one of my best friends now, but we didn't know each other super well back then. And I got an email at, from him at like four in the morning that was like, Wes, will you come and record a song with me um, and, and play music with me? And I was like, yeah, sure. Um, and so we, I came over to his house. We recorded a song um, in like an afternoon. We had kind of an idea together and um, I just really enjoyed it. And I had been playing, I played music a lot when I was, uh, you know, I was in bands and toured a little bit when I was younger and um, was really active here in St. Louis and in Illinois um, playing around a lot. And I really missed that. And I, you know, I put so much into the business and to other parts of my life that I, that like music had really become kind of something that I put on the back burner. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, we put out a couple songs, we played a show. Um, uh, you know, we, we did kind of like a coming out show where we were like, Hey, this is our band. Um, and that sold out at a small venue here. And um, we we're really excited about that. And so, um, of course, me and my entrepreneurial mind, I was like, let's keep going. Let's keep doing this stuff. We were just going to play one show and have that kind of be like it. Mm-hmm. But everybody liked it so much and we had so much fun doing it. We kept going. So um, uh, a couple of years ago now, the Fastest Gun in the West is about two years old. And that was one that Justin and I recorded together. He, um Justin's one of these like talented guys that kind of knows how to do everything. So he recorded the first two or three songs that we did. And um, then with this new song, um, What's Left of Me, I spent a lot of time demoing stuff out on GarageBand during quarantine and uh, a lot of time in my studio just trying different ideas. And I was like, you know, um, the studio that I that I rent my rehearsal space also has a recording studio that you can book time at. And so um, I hit them up and I was like, hey, you know, I really want to do this right. <clears throat> I want to work with somebody who's has a lot of experience. And um, so I booked some time back in December and um, the rest is history with what's left of me. So uh, we recorded two songs. Mm-hmm. And um, so this is the first of those two, the singles. And then um, there will be like a five song EP later this year at some point as well. So uh, these are kind of the first two of like this new sound with this, um, you know, working with a new engineer and and all of that. So, uh, yeah, I don't know if I answered all your questions. You did. You answered absolutely (laughs) every single one of them. Uh, Because one of the things I was going to ask is, you know, have you guys been doing this amidst, you know, the pandemic and everything and how you've been doing that? And so one of the things you kind of incidentally answered was yes, and that you've been working in uh, GarageBand. So I guess take us through that. 
Uh, it's obviously free, yeah. incredibly capable software. Is it something that you already use, you know, for podcasting? Do you use the studio that you're renting at for podcasting? There's kind of a few questions in there, but. Yeah, yeah. So um, in 2019, after we went on like a little weekend, we did like a, a date where we played in St. Louis and then played in Kansas City. And when I came back, I was like, I think I'm going to try. I think I could save us a lot of time if I learned how to demo stuff out on GarageBand. Mm -hmm. And then I could send it to the guys um, and it would save us time in practice. Um, cause you know, we're all, we all have full-time jobs. Some of us are married. Some of us have girlfriends, you know, like yeah. everybody has stuff that's going on. So I was like, if I could send them a fully fleshed out song and say, here's what I'm thinking, that would be a, save us a lot of time. Um, yeah. so I kind of dove in, I've never thought I was like, I always thought recording stuff was super difficult and tedious and it really wasn't that hard. <laughs> um, I got like a little interface, a little focus right interface, and um, it plugs right into my computer. And um, yeah, it's a free software that comes with, um, you know, I think you have to have a Mac, um, yeah. but uh, it's a free software and it's kind of very entry level, but it gets the job done if you're just wanting to demo stuff out. And so I, I will say I probably have close to 50 ideas or songs in my Dropbox that I did before I actually came to, you know, over the last couple of years, mm -hmm. um, that before I actually finish a song, I have all these ideas and I like to put them down and listen to them. And that's, what's really been an advantage for me, um, is to be able to like record a song, maybe record it with no lyrics before I, you know, just instrumentals and listen to it in my car, listen to it in my apartment before I actually like, pen the lyrics and the melody to it. So um, it's been super helpful. And I, I have used it for my podcast as well. Um, I haven't quite graduated to some of these more advanced systems like Logic or Pro Tools. But um, yeah, GarageBand, I, if, if anybody out there <clears throat> that's listening is if wanting to get into recording, I highly recommend GarageBand for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, the funny thing is we actually use <clears throat> Logic to, to edit the podcast and um, I'm actually at gripes right now with logic because when it works, it is fan freaking tastic. But when it doesn't work, there's absolutely no logical reason for it because it doesn't come down to the settings. All my settings are right. It's just for like a project goes, I don't know, haywire or something. Um, so I'm actually in the middle of gripes with logic right now. Ugh. And like sometimes I can't record in Logic, it too much latency, and of course you know it's like oh your settings no my settings are fine and my system's fine. Can I'll open up GarageBand and I can actually record in GarageBand just fine, but for some reason its bigger brother is having issues that day. It's just it's weird. So stick with GarageBand as long as you can. I think. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Good. <laughs> yeah. So far it's been doing me right. So. <clears throat> Good. And then Pro Tools is just expensive. <laughs> for what? For what? For what you get? Um, right. right. <clears throat> groovy. Okay, so we've chatted about uh, lots of stuff. We chatted about Nick Lachey. We chatted about, um, actually, in the beginning, before we technically hit record, we were talking about an Instagram success story. So maybe tell us a little bit more about how you've been using Instagram to empower your success and make connections, because I think that that is a valuable uh, piece of information. Oh, yeah. For sure, for sure. So um, one thing that I've, that I've been doing for a long time is, you know, I, I do a little bit of, like, self-help and motivational speaking and stuff like that. So um Something that I think has just been awesome is through both communities, like that spiritual self-help community and the punk rock community, if you're following t hashtags and stuff like that, I've been able to connect with so many people. You know, like you follow a hashtag, something comes up that kind of catches my eye and I'll maybe even reach out to that person. Or, or I've had people reach out to me who have somehow found me through someone shared my post or they're following a hashtag that I'm using yeah. And it's just been a really cool way to connect with people all over the world. And um, that was actually how I met Val um, was I, you know, prior to the release of this song, I think it was probably back in even October, or November, before I even went in to record them. I was looking for ways to kind of get my music out because um, it's a lot different than the early late 90s, early 2000s, where <laughs> we would literally go to shows and print 100 flyers and pass them out to people at shows to get yeah. them to come to a show or listen to our music yeah. and everything back then, like 20 years ago, it wasn't digital like it is now. Now, mm -hmm. you know, people in France and Germany and Netherlands and Costa Rica can hear your music and, um, yeah. you know, you don't have to physically go there <laughs> to tell them about it. So, um, 
you know, that's just been a really cool way as I was kind of diving into following some of these up and coming bands and following playlists and stuff as I found Val's page and um, went to her website and reached out to her. And now um, she's probably annoyed by me at this point. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, now we work together <laughs> and we talk every day and um, uh, it's, it's really, really cool just to be able to have that. It's almost kind of surreal or, when you really think about it, it's kind of crazy um, how connected we are in the world today. But at the same time, I think it's, it's disconnected us sometimes. Like I think you have friends and maybe in different parts of the country and they can just look at your Instagram or Facebook and kind of catch a glimpse of what you're up to instead of picking up that phone and, and calling you and, yeah. you know, really making a connection. So <laughs> there's good and bad, but yeah, there's a lot of good. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. Okay, so it looks like there isn't anything you don't do. Podcasting, music, uh, s- self-help. So it's so what I mentioned, Tony Robbins. You're probably like, yeah, I am that guy. I, that's what I do. <laughs> well, um, I definitely resonated with that for sure. Okay, cool. Uh, something else you mentioned was St. Louis and Kansas City. So I wanted to chat about barbecue with you for like one second. Oh, okay. Yeah, are you from that area or were you just visiting that area? Uh, I'm, from, I'm from St. Louis. Um, I've spent a lot of time in Kansas City as well. Um, I am a vegetarian, so I don't eat a lot of barbecue, Okay, but I can talk barbecue. I know, I know about like some of the, like Kansas city is supposed to be really known for their burnt ends uh-huh. apparently. And here I think we're, we're really known for, uh, I think it's like pulled pork or brisket or something like that. Okay. You know, there's different cuts of meat and all that. And I mean, the barbecue scene here. There's so much good barbecue here in St. Louis. And like, and I still love, um, you know, now there are places that are kind of getting into using like seitan and stuff like that for uh, barbecue mm-hmm. um, or, or cauliflower or different things like that. But um, uh, I still love the sauce. Um, I'm a big like Buffalo Wild Wings fan too. Like um, they just, Buffalo Wild Wings just added like cauliflower to their cauliflower wings. Um, but I just love the sauce. The barbecue sauce. <laughs> I'll try a different sauce. I don't. You can give me a piece of bread or something, and I just like to try the different sauces. You know, it's not a big deal to me. Okay. What is? Because I know that's another big component between all the barbecues. You know, from the Carolinas to Kansas City to Texas, is the sauce component. So, what is it about St. Louis, Kansas City sauce? Hmm. I don't know. That's that's a that's a tough one. Um, uh, I, I, I like to think Kansas City has kind of more of a sweeter taste to it. Okay. Um, I'm more of a hot. I like I like stuff that's a little hot and spicy though. So, um, yeah, that's that's kind of more. That's more my speed. You did mention buffalo wings, so yes, that makes sense. Have you tried the cauliflower wings? Like, are they good? I have. Uh, yeah, they're pretty good. They're pretty good. I I do. Re- I highly recommend. Um, they're <laughs> I just tend to eat the whole box. Like the thing about like our <laughs> wings is like, you know, they, they only have two sizes and, and one size is too small. The other size is like too big. Um, I probably only order them like once or twice, but I just tend to eat the, I'll get the large order and I'll be like, Oh, I won't eat all these. And then 15 minutes later, they're gone. So <laughs> oh boy. yeah. Buffalo cauliflower is my jam. <laughs> Uh, what else is there that's new in the barbecue world? A lot of it's so new, but, um, have you ever had like barbecued watermelon or like smoked watermelon? I know there's a few different ways that it's done. No. Okay. Uh, I know what we uh, do in the summertime that blew my, my wife's mind. It was just like, was actually just taking so water. Canada. Sorry. Are you from Canada? Yes. Okay. Is, um, grilling watermelon. So like watermelon slices and grilling them. And even marinating them a little bit, if you can, a little bit of salt on there as well. You start getting this this collusion of flavors that usually aren't associated with barbecue or with watermelon. And then uh, I don't know if they're smoking it or roasting it or what they're doing, but there's a way to do like a whole watermelon where it looks like a roast. It actually looks like a roast and it slices and the whole bit. Oh, that sounds good. Mm -hmm. I'd be down for either of those. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. All right, Wes, we we chatted about... Instagram success stories, Nick Lachey, Kansas City Barbecue, you getting a new job, a new place. Uh, we chatted about entrepreneurialism. We chatted about motivational speaking. Uh, 
Now I just shot to a S- SNL. I am a motivational speaker. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we have a fan down by the river. We got a regular Shakespeare over here, um, <laughs> which of course is not you. Uh, cool. Is there anything that we missed? Is there anything that you wanted to chat about? No, um, I don't think so. Um, yeah, so I, I do have, so this single's out today. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and it's already getting, I mean, there's just the response has already been incredible. I'm, I'm so thankful. I really, I really tried to work on, um, you know, I worked hard in every aspect of, of this music, writing the songs, recording them. But then also I, I felt like I'm putting just as much it, at, into promoting the song than I did um, rec- writing and recording it. So, and we also have a video out as well. So um, if you go to my YouTube, if you just look up Wes Hoffman, what's left of me, mm-hmm. um, that's out as well. Um, so this song it's out today. And then I'm thinking probably the next song will be out in a couple of months or so. Uh, and then from there, we're going to go back into the studio and record the next three and put those out at some point. So by the end of the year, uh-huh. there will be a five song EP. Uh-huh. And um, I'm so stoked. I have uh, two of the, two of the three songs written, um, working on the third one, but um, I can't wait to, I can't wait to share it. And yeah, I'm just so stoked. I'm so stoked on life right now, John. <laughs> I would hope so. You're a motivational speaker. <laughs> Although I guess that's powerful too. Have you ever had like a bad day and you open up and you're like, you know what guys, I'm having a bad day, but I'm going to talk to you right now about how I'm going to power through that and still inspire you. Do you ever do that? Absolutely, man. Like, you know, I'm a, I'm a huge, uh, I'm a huge advocate of PMA, positive mental attitude of like trying to look at the positive, having a growth mindset, like, you know, every, as whatever situation you're in, however bad it is, there's, I b- truly do believe there's a lesson to be learned or there's something to be positive about. And like a lot of times you can shift your focus on a lot of times life isn't that bad. We just think it's that bad. Um, cause we're focusing on the things that aren't, we're focusing on the two or three things in life that aren't the way we want them to be. Um, so yeah, I, I've kind of shifted as I've grown as a person, I've shifted my focus a little bit from telling people to just look at the positive all the time. Um, to, you know, Hey, sometimes you just have a bad day and that's okay. Like just to just being your authentic self. Like, um, you know, I think it's good, you know, if you have too many bad days in a row though, you have to kind of like check yourself, like what's going on here? Like, how can I pull myself out of this funk? But everybody goes through funks. Everybody has bad days. Um, and that's just like the fluidity of life I think is not every day is going to be awesome. I mean, today is a great day. Tomorrow's my birthday. I put out this new song. I'm going to have a big party. Like I'm off work today. You know, it's, it's, I'm having an awesome day. I'm having an awesome weekend. Um, you know, Monday might suck (laughs) and a bunch of bad stuff might happen, but um, it's like, you just have to remember that, you know, bad things are going to happen, but it's the way that you deal with them. And it's the way that you respond to them. That's most important. Correct. Amundos. All right, mister. Well, I believe that concludes our conversation. So I just wanted to thank you for coming on to the punk rock podcast today. Is it punk rock or rock metal? It's rock metal. But since you're punk rock, I actually get that question a lot. Like we're a punk band. How come we're on your show? I'm like, is is not the word rock and punk rock? Like, it, it, Oh yeah. You know. Yeah. I feel like rock is kind of an all com- all encompassing thing. And there's, there's definitely metal elements of metal in punk and yeah. Elements of punk and metal, you know, so it's yep. all, it's all, Espec- I, I can dig it. Especially hard, hardcore, hardcore punk. The The line between hardcore punk and metal is a very fine line, I think. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Somebody actually had to tell me that that was punk. And I was like, really? I thought it was metal. And they're like, no, it's hardcore punk. And I was like, oh, okay. That's very different from the punk I think of, which is, I guess it's more skate type stuff. Sure. Punk, punk in and of itself is like over if you go back from the er, the late 70s early 80s to now it's evolved so much you know like the new machine gun Kelly album people are saying that that's pop punk and like i agree it, it is like but it's very far removed from like the early 
punk and what that was like the Ramones and sex pixels and stuff like that. It's very poppy and mainstream, but it has elements of punk in it. And I, I think it's great. I actually really like his new album a lot, but um, it's just so different than the punk that I grew up with. Like in the nineties, like the lag wagons and MXPX and oh, um, yeah. no effects and all that hey. kind of stuff. Hey, sweets. Hey. We are currently finishing up with Wes. We're about to jump on with Manuel. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, thanks so much for having me, John. I really appreciate it. Absolutely.